Welcome back to Flashpoint. President Biden has now been in office for almost three months. He's nearing his 100 day mark coming up at the end of this month. During his first two months in office, he signed into law a $1.9 trillion COVID-19 relief bill and proposed a, a $2.3 trillion infrastructure and tax plan. But working across the aisle has proven tough. No Republican lawmakers voted for the COVID-19 relief bill and none appear likely to support the infrastructure plan at this point. Less than 100 in at this point, uh, Professor Scott Huffman of Winthrop. What are fair criticisms and what are not fair criticisms that, that are sort of uh, owed not only to President Biden, but any other president? Well, you know, the 100 days is kind of an artificial uh, point. It was, it was, you know, after Franklin Delano Roosevelt and, you know, the, the famous 100 days, we've decided that that's a metric uh, to use for all presidents. It's kind of odd, but sure, you know, it's the new it's the new metric. So we have to look at, uh, in some ways, what he said he's going to do. He said he talked about the number of vaccinations uh he did achieve that i mean the the rolling out the vaccinations and getting them out to the states uh and getting them in people's arms that that worked uh, as far as the promises about uh you know, pandemic relief, uh, the bills that you mentioned, um, he followed through with those. Uh, Republicans were in favor of those when Trump proposed them, and there was uh, across the aisle voting from Democrats who voted for it under Trump. But again, in this polarized time, you really couldn't expect a lot of Republicans. You know, the Senate used to be not nearly as polarized as the House. And in fact, Democrats and Republicans in the Senate didn't used to be very far apart ideologically, but over the years, they have become more and more polarized and negative partisanship, which means you know not doing something because my party wants it, but simply doing it to stymie the other party. Negative partisanship on both sides has, has really come to the forefront. So I really didn't expect many senators, especially when Trump is still the voice of the Republican party in many ways, I didn't expect many to, to come across. Same with the infrastructure bill. That actually, a lot of the elements in it were things Trump had talked about doing. And, you know, Trump was in power, the Republicans wanted it, the Democrats were, you know, some were for, some were not, and now it's flipped. Negative partisanship is to be expected, but the fact is, those are some promises that he followed through with. Uh, promises he did not. Uh, he is still putting kids in cages, although I think he's changed the name de de detention centers or something. Um, he has backed off about relief for student loan debt. Um, and so there's several of those things where he has been called out by the, the far left in the Democratic Party for not following through. Uh, it's been said fair or not that this is, you know, he's ushering in a time of big government. You know, Republicans have really ran very successfully in the last 34 year, 40 years about, hey, the scariest words in the English language, I'm government, I'm here to help out, you know, and, and really quite successfully to where I do feel like Americans have a skepticism about the federal government. Can, can one man, can one president really change that? Or is that something that's baked into sort of the American psyche? That, that was that was a great, great quoting of Ronald Reagan. Uh, and that is what he said. And he really ushered in this idea. And, you know, his uh, uh, mantra was, you know, uh, starve the beast um, by, you know, not feeding it, not giving the federal government money and forcing it to shrink down. Um, the, the great irony is, though, uh, you know, people who call for small government, when they get in power, they increase it. Uh, you know, Trump increased the, the debt and deficit astronomically to historic highs. Um, you know, you get things like uh, increases in, in ICE, uh, you know, immigration customs enforcement. So there has been an increase in federal government, and that's actually been true. It was true under uh, George W. Bush, obviously, Department of Homeland Security. It's one of the most massive increases in the size of federal government. Um, under Trump, we obviously saw a massive increase in, in government spending, and, and that a lot of that came from tax cuts to, to wealthier folks and to businesses. So yes, people are distrustful of government, especially conservatives now. It is a conservative mantra to be distrustful of the media, to be distrustful of uh, government in general, and you know, it, be distrustful of anybody who's not uh, in line with their beliefs. And that is even coming true within the Republican Party where staunch conservatives like Mitt Romney are called rhinos, uh, you know, Republicans in name only because they're not in line with the, the sort of the modern 
uh, a kind of Trumpian view of, of conservatism. Real quickly, I want to get your reaction because it's been a, a rough week for uh, your community there in Rock Hill. Uh, uh, five people shot to death at a home, a home of a, a well-known uh, physician there in town. Uh, you don't have any specific link to any of these people, but I, but I know it, it's a small town. When something like that happens, it, I'd be remiss if I did not ask you to sort of your thoughts on it. Um, I, I, you know, I've had the opportunity to meet Dr. Leslie a couple of times, but did not know him um, as well as many in our community. He and his family were, uh, the phrase pillars of the community is not overstating it for that family. Uh, everyone in Rock Hill is at most one to two degrees removed from someone who just had their life upended. Uh, it is a great tragedy to this community. It, the, the act itself was horrible, but uh, to whom it happened, and I'm talking about both the, the Leslie family and the, the Adams family, uh, the, the murderer's mother was a beloved teacher, uh, retired and had uh, been in an accident, partially paralyzed. Uh, so, you know, really two horrible tragedies, one unspeakable crime, and the, the whole community is, is absolutely reeling. It, it, people are trying to make sense of it. We know there will, in the end, be no sense made of it, but people still just desire to know why. Why can something this horrible happen? I think it's important to set the expectations there that regardless of what the investigators find and, and what they come up with in, in the weeks and months to come, we're still not going to have the answers that, that, that we want. We just never do in a situation like this. All right, Professor Scott Huffman. Professor, thanks as always. We appreciate it. Thank you. More Flashpoint after this.